Well, hey everybody, Joy here. I'm just playing and enjoying this pretty day and I've got all my fabric folded and put away except for some of that hanging in the other room. And so I put this, <laughs> I seem to have this new thing I do where I put the fabric up here and get it ready to put on a bolt and I decided to just cut something out of it. <laughs> I told myself a while ago, what you should do is you should cut out a garment every single day and then you will get through that fabric. I mean, if you did that, just say you did it five days a week and there's 53 weeks and so 53 times five, what is that? That's 250 at least. And if I got 250 bolts of fabric off that shelf, I could buy more fabric. <laughs> What a nutty reason, right? So what am I making today? Do you see the back of this envelope? How many times have I made this? <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. And that's if I happen to show you. My gosh, I made it in black. Where's that one? I'd love to wear that. <laughs> I lose track of where these garments are. And especially now that I've got garments in the coach and garments here, I get... I lose track of what I made and where it's at because I've sewn a thousand garments. So, y'all always, always love this top. That's one of them. You always love it. You always comment on it. So, I decided to make another Dondi, Dondi neck inside. I decided to make another Dondi. Now, you don't have to make this neckline on this top. You can make it V. You can make it um, high. You can make it a U. You can make it a, a boat neck. You can make it however you want to because I'm working with Fit Nice System. And this has a set in sleeve. And a set in sleeve always fits me better because it's not so full as when you have the dolman sleeve. The dolman sleeve adds a lot of extra. What do I have on today? Oh, I didn't make this one. The dolman sleeve always has a lot of extra right here. But one of these days, I'm going to get out one of my stripes and I'm going to cut the front up like this and copy it. So I'm going to lengthen it. I held it up to me. How long do I want to lengthen it? I held it up to me. It's a little bit shorter than what I've got on. I decided I like the length of what I've got on, so I'm going to lengthen it three inches. The top I have on is not three inches longer than this is, but I need at least an inch, inch and a quarter for a hem. So, I'm just throwing out there three inches, and I might not even have three inches. And my pencil has rolled off this table twice. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I may not have three inches. This piece of fabric, always check this, my friends. This piece of fabric is, goodness, an inch, inch and a half shorter on the top than it is on the bottom piece of fabric. And it's the opposite down here. It goes all the way to here on the top, but on the bottom, it's almost three inches shorter. So always check to make sure that the bottom of your layout, of your piece of fabric that you're getting ready to cut out, make sure that you're getting double layers all the way through. Now I can pull this all the way up to here and get enough. And so that'll let me add, ah, uh, I know I can get two inches on it, two inches, and then if I put this up to here, and I put this over to here, and then I figure out where, where, how much do I have back here? Let's just cut this off and see. Look at that, big difference. Yes, that's extremely technical right there. Did you catch that? <laughs> oh. Okay, so I've got three inches. I've got three inches here, and I've got two there. So what we'll do is we'll find a number in between. Two and a half sounds good to me. How about you? So I'm going to get my weights. What do I do with my weights? Hold on. You know about weights. Remember the nuts? You go to Ace Hardware, and you go up to somebody that works there and you say, can you tell me where the nuts are? <laughs> because you will never find them. For the longest time I called them washers and they aren't washers, these are washers. There's three washers in here wrapped with grosgrain ribbon. But this is a nut, 
one nut. So it's kind of fun going. Ah! And I've never found them anywhere but Ace Hardware, by the way. So we don't even have an Ace Hardware down here where I live. But I love to use weights to hold my patterns down. Now I have made this. You saw how many times I made it. So I don't have to worry about fit. Make sure when you're putting these out to cut them that you're on a straight line and that your fold is straight and your fold isn't going like this. So if you have a table that has the um, lines on it, the rulers, don't go by the rulers by the way. The ruler measurements on this table are almost a quarter inch different than the ruler measures on a tape measure or a ruler. So, I'm warning you about that. <laughs> Not the same. I was really surprised to see that. Okay, so put her down. Make her stay. And you know I have a sway back, so there's going to be a place here where the fabric sticks out further than the paper pattern. That's okay. That gives me a little bit extra around me. <laughs> Now, anytime you're cutting out a pattern and you're making a garment for yourself, for my newbies, my very, very, very first video back, I don't know how many years ago, was actually about this. Somebody asked me, they had my email. I think Glenda Sparling gave her my email. And she asked me, how do you know if the pattern is going to fit you? Well... Notwithstanding, you may need a full bust adjustment or a sway back or a low shoulder or a forward shoulder. We're not talking about those kinds of things. But how will I know if when I cut this out and I put it on over my head, it's not going to be too tight in the bust, too tight in the belly, too tight in the hip? How will I know? Measure yourself. Measure yourself. This is a really, really cool ruler from Glenda Sparling. This thing goes up and down, and you can put it around. I certainly don't want to measure my waist in front of anybody, but I'm going to show you how it works. <laughs> oh, where's the days when I had a 25-inch waist? Oh, and I thought I was fat. I thought I was fat then. Oh, Lord, give me another chance. <laughs> so this has a snapper thingy. And so you snap it, so see, you don't need any hands. And so now you put it on your waist, and you pull it tight. You pull it tight, and my waist is anywhere from my belly button up to uh, my bra line, okay? <laughs> so we're going to call it right here today. And so then you can just unpop it and look at the line, and there's your measurement. So... Now that I know my measurement, let's say it was 25. <laughs> now that I know it's my measurement, we're sewing in a knit, we know a knit has stretch. But still, when you're 72 years old, you don't want it fitting you like paint on a wall. I want it to fit me like this one fits me. And what I could do, and what you could do, is you could put on a top that you have, and you can lay it on the table, and you can measure from here to here, and from here to here, and double all your measurements, and from here to here, and from shoulder tip to shoulder tip, and then you could make sure that this paper measures the same. See, this is a knit, that's a knit. Now this is not an ITY knit. This is kind of a cottony knit. ITY knits are really, really slinky. Either way, I would still make sure there was ease. So however much ease, and I would say this one has about four inches. So say my waist was 25, and I'm getting ready to cut out this paper pattern. I want to make sure the waist is going to fit me. I know I want four inches ease. 25 plus four is 29. This is the back. I'm cutting it on the fold, so this is half the back. So say I want 29 inches, I'm just going to play like, this may change, but for your first garment, I'm going to play like of that 29 inches, 
half of it's in the front and half of it, let's call it 30 inches, okay? Let's call it 30 inches. So let's play like half the 30 inches is in the front, half the 30 inches is in the back, all right? 30 inches, half of 30 is 15. So I would, and I'm not, but we're playing like I have a 25 inch waist, right? <laughs> and now we're adding five to it. So half of that 30 would be the front and half would be the back. So I've got half of a back. And if the whole back has to be 15 inches, then half the back to the seam line, you would mark the seam line, mine's one half inch, you would measure from the seam line over to the center back and see how much it measures. 15, let me see, what did I say we needed? It would help if your memory, you know, was longer than a, a flea's tail. Um, I said we needed a total of 30 inches, so we need 15 front, 15 back, and half of that would be seven and a half, right? Seven and a half, and seven and a half is 15. So you would measure from your seam line over to center back, and if you didn't have seven and a half inches, if you only had five inches, it's not going to fit you. If you've got 10 inches, it's going to be way too big. If you come up with seven and a half inches, then you know it's perfect. Okay? Now mine, just for the heck of it, let me see if it's so huge. Mine is ten and a half. So ten and a half and ten and a half is going to give me 21 inches for the back of my waist. See there? And so I just put it up to me. And I see, you know, well that feels good. I think that's going to work. And then the front, same thing. Where's your waist? Tie a string around yourself, tie a ribbon around yourself, put some elastic around yourself. Measure from top of your shoulder, where the pattern's going to be at, where the shoulder's going to be at. Measure down to your waist. My waist is usually 18. And so measure. It's really simple. Don't measure just your waist. Measure from shoulder tip to shoulder tip. I'm 15. So from shoulder tip to shoulder tip on my paper pattern, I want it to be 15 inches. Are you different in the back? I'm not, but you might be. So that, that's one of those other kinds of measurements. But to start, work with circumference. Circumference. How much is there to go around your body? Okay? And when you're making a simple t-shirt, that should be enough to get you by. Measure your belly. Are you bigger in the belly than the hip? Then measure your belly. Measure from your shoulder down to your belly. Measure around your belly. My belly is as big as my butt. In fact, I wish I could turn it around and have a nice round belly on the back and a flat butt on the front. <laughs> I know. I know. Okay. So that's what I'm doing today in my little snippet. And everything I put on the table decides to fall on the floor, but that's okay. So I'm going to add two and a half inches to the length, two and a half inches to the length. Now I just did what I told you on this sleeve. I measured me right here, right here. I measured my wrist. You have to have two inches. See here in this store-bought blouse, there's two inches, or probably, probably three. But you need at least two. So I measured, I mean, look how skinny this sleeve is. Now this is only half a sleeve. This is only half a sleeve, I'm placing it on the fold. So I measured up there at my bicep, I measured me, I was 11. I added two to 11 and I got 13, and this is going to be 13 inches when it's made. I measured my wrist down here, same thing. Now on my wrist, I don't need two inches, on my wrist, with a knit, probably a half inch would be plenty, depending on the stretch, but I always like to pull my sleeves up, so. You can see how little that is right down there. So I like it snug at my wrist. The sleeve, if you cut out a store-bought pattern, a commercial pattern, and you have a sleeve, how do you know if the sleeve's gonna fit you? Do what I just said, measure you, measure it, measure you, measure it. One of the most important things is to measure 
measure you. This is a hard measurement. You might need to get hubby to help you. But you got to go from your shoulder tip. That would match the shoulder tip of the pattern. And you kind of have to fiddle with it. Your shoulder tip. And then bend your elbow a little bit. Like this. And then go walk up to a mirror somewhere and see where it is. See where it is on your wrist bone. Mine should be 23 inches. Let's see. Yeah, 23 inches exactly on me. So, you want to make sure that from here to here on your sleeve, if you want it to your wrist, 23 inches. If I want my sleeve to be this length, I'll measure from here to here on this sleeve, and then I'll measure from here to here on this sleeve, then I'll mark it, then I will add a hem allowance. You have to have a hem allowance or you're going to shorten your sleeve. Sewing is just, it's simple figuring, simple math. You got a ball, you're going to make something to go around the ball. You make sure the measurement of what you're making is bigger than the ball. <laughs> it's that easy, y'all. So I was telling you about my mats when my battery went dead. These mats are not as good as the Quilter Select mats or the Ulfa Rotary mats. They aren't. They get cuts in them, and they hold the cuts, and they get fuzz in them, and so you have to clean them a lot. They do not cut as well as those other mats do, but if you have one of these big tables, and I know you're gonna say, how big is your table, Julie? Well, I can't tell you yet. Hold on. My table is 40 by 72, and so I use a rotary cutter. I just put a brand new blade in it. And when I'm doing shoulders and things that are straight, I'll put a ruler, and I'll cut next to the ruler like I was quilting, but I'm not. I think that's what I was doing is I was using it for quilting. Cutting out those stars, and I ran it over some pins. So this is the back, Jack. Okay. Now what I do is I take a friction marker and I mark center back of the bottom. Why? I don't know. I just like to know where the center of everything is. You definitely need to know center of the top. You need to know this center and the back center, so mark it. I don't know how many people are new and have missed like all my tutorials. <laughs> But get you some of these. They're in my Amazon store. They're friction colors and they're markers, not pens. See, it's a marker. A marker. They're amazing because you touch the mark with an iron and it disappears. How wonderful is that? Yeah, and I have a brand new iron. Bought the same one. Bought the Rowenta Perfect Steam. I think it's called Perfect Steam Station now. I don't know why. I'm going to cut two notches in the back so I can line my sleeve up to the back. I'm not going to cut one in the front because if the front, if the front doesn't have any notches, I'll know that's the front. All right? So this is the back. Now look, how easy is that? How easy is that? It's just too easy. You sew it together at the shoulders. You sew it together at the side seams. And it's almost done. Now, of course, I know this fits me because you've seen I already made it five times. So it makes sewing so much easier when you know it's going to fit you because you don't have to try it on and pinch here and pinch there and cut here and fold there and, you know. So now I'm going to cut out the sleeves. And the sleeves have to be cut out twice because Judy Kessinger Fit Night System Patterns, she cuts her sleeves out on the fold. So you can see I've got this funky shape left here and there's no fold in it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it big enough for a sleeve and I'm going to straighten it out. I'm gonna straighten it out so I'll have a nice piece to fold. And I will have leftover material, as I always do, for tops. What do you, how much fabric do you buy? I always buy two yards. 
for tops. If I'm going to make pants, depending on the width of the fabric, I buy two and a half. If I'm going to make wide leg pants, I buy three yards. If you're going to make wide leg pants, you need measure from your waist to the floor, double that, and then add enough for hems and a waistband. Because you can only get one leg out of a width of fabric because it's so wide. Okay? So now I've got two pieces here. I don't know if I can cut out two at a time or not. I might be able to. I don't know. I never did try that. Fold it so both of them. See, what you have to do is you have to cut out one right side up and one upside down on the fabric. So I'm thinking if I fold it, and when you have a knit, you're like, where's this straight of grain? The straight of grain is when it looks nice. It lays flat, and there's not a thousand wrinkles, and make sure the fabric is all up in there. I haven't done two at a time before, but it just looks like something I ought to be able to do. And so I'll let you know if it doesn't turn out. How about that? So what I'll do is I'll cut out two, and then I'll put them out separately and make sure that they're cut right. You just threw that away. I sure did. Now I'm going to use some scissors to cut this little notch here because it's hard to get a rotary cutter in a point. you got to have good scissors and good blades for your rotary cutter. You have an anniversary, you have a birthday, you have Christmas, you have Mother's Day. Give everybody a list of sewing notions that you'd like to have. I, of course, got ten of each one of them, so <laughs> I don't need any more. But rotary blades, you go through rotary blades, you really do. Okay, Judy Hessinger does not put notches, but I do. So I'm going to put these sleeves the way they're supposed to be. I'll show you what I mean. Now that I cut out two at a time and I'm not sure that's going to work, I am going to cut a notch at center front, at the center. You always want to do that. You always want to cut a notch up here at the center of the sleeve cap. You have to do it. And so now I'm going to lay these out flat because sometimes a knit it wants to just misbehave. So nice and smooth it out again. There you go. Nice, nice. I don't usually make long sleeves, but I thought, good grief, it's winter. Look at it. It looks like it's coming out perfect. Oh my goodness. That is just awesome. Yeah, that did. That turned out great. So what I'm going to do is pick a side, any side. It doesn't matter as long as you got two of them. So I'm going to make two notches over here to tell me this is the back. Okay? So now I have two sleeves, one for the right and one for the left. I'm ready to sew it together. I'll come back and show it to you when I get it tryonable. That's a new word I just made up. Tryonable. So it's 15 minutes since my last snippet. And this is how much I have done. Shoulder, shoulder. I've lowered this shoulder one half inch. And I lower it by a quarter inch because two times quarter is a half. Then I lowered this armhole a half inch. Why? Because this shoulder is a half inch lower than this shoulder. And if I don't lower it, if I don't fix that now, my hem will be crooked. Yeah, it looks pretty good. My hem would be crooked. So you can see I've added the length. You can see there's plenty of room going around me. You can see the side seams straight up and down the sides. Why is that? Because I have a round back and a sway back in it. If I didn't, the side seam would be coming forward like this. Okay. So, next is the sleeves. This is going to be a dondy, so it's going to have that big, full, ruffly neck. It's so easy. 
It is so easy. Hello, you want to show me? You want me to show you how you make it? Look here. This is what you do. You cut a rectangle. You sew the rectangle together and then you sew it around the neck. It is an easy, easy way to finish a neckline. Awesome. How do you know how much to make it? Measure the neckline. Add two inches. I think it's two inches. And then you cut it. Is it 13 inches? I think it's 13 inches wide. So it would be way taller than this. It would be, you know, 13 inches. How tall is 13 inches? Pretty tall. So it would be this big. You cut it. This is 24. I would cut it 26 by 13. Then you would fold it in half. Then you would sew it all the way around. And then it would come up and fold again. Oh, it's a rectangle. <laughs> I'm telling you, Judy Kessinger does not do complicated. <laughs> she doesn't even sew on her application. She glues it. <laughs> so this is my new, 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 new top. It's going to have long sleeves. Now, here's an insurance policy. Let me show you the insurance policy. Hold on. Insurance policy. Take the sleeve. Don't put it on your shirt yet. <laughs> Don't sew it together yet. Take some pins. Pin it together half inch. If you sew for very long, you'll know a half inch, you'll know a quarter inch, you'll know five eighths inch. Oh, you'll just know it. You really will. So what I'm going to do is put some pins in this. It's not going to look good, but I can tell if it's going to fit good. And if it's going to be long enough, I know it is because I've made it before. But I'm just showing you what to do. Alright? So I've just put some pins. Play like I just sewed it. I didn't sew it. Now, look for your notches. This is the back, so this is the sleeve that goes on this side. Pull it up on your arm before you sew it to your blouse. <laughs> Pull it up on your arm. How does it feel? Can you bend your arm? <laughs> is it the right length? It's perfect. It's just perfect. Oh, it is just perfect. Can I pull it up if I want to? I can. See? So, do that. And if your sleeve doesn't fit, if it's tight, I've had it happen, especially in wovens. If it's tight and you feel like you can't move forward in it, your sleeve's too tight. It needs at least, even in a woven, it needs at least two inches of ease. Okay? So, I'm going to sew both of my sleeves right sides together. That was just a test. Serge, I'm using my serger to make the whole blouse. Four thread serger. Why? Because I already know it fits because I've made it five other times. Otherwise, I would be sewing with a 3.0 stitch length and I would be sewing it with my sewing machine. Because you can easily rip that out, go back, make it a wider seam, make it a skinnier seam, or whatever. If you do it with the serger, you've cut your seam off and you've got four threads in there. <laughs> So, if you've never made the blouse before, I would not use a serger to start. That's just me. You be you. So, I sewed my sleeves together with a small zigzag on my sewing machine because I felt like they were a little too full here. How, I don't know, with all this hanging down. But anyway, they felt too big right here. So, I felt my top, felt my top. Because you have to make your arm a hole smaller if you're going to make your sleeve smaller. And I thought, I wonder if I could take it in on the sides. And you can look at this and see. I have plenty of room to take it in and have it still fit me. So I'm making the arm hole smaller and I'm making the sleeve smaller. Let me show you a picture. Well, a little short video. Okay, so here's the paper sleeve. Will I make the sleeve on the paper smaller? No. Because my knit that I sew with this paper pattern may not always be this slinky. So you can see here, this is the seam when I make it the same as the paper. This orange line is how much I'm getting ready to take it in. This will still give me an inch of ease. Now I said two inches. Start with two inches. <laughs> 
but this is stretchy enough and soft enough that one inch, one and a quarter inch is gonna be plenty. So I'm gonna take it in, take it in, take it in. The sleeve down here is fine. It turned out okay down here at the sleeve because I didn't give myself two inches down there, remember? I said I need it tighter on the wrist because I wanna pull it up. So I just took a ruler and I drew this line. So I'm gonna sew, 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 and I'm gonna stop right there where the hem comes up, okay? Then I'm going to go into my serger and serge off all of this extra seam here. And I'm going to take my blouse off and I'm going to go make the armhole smaller. And then I'm going to put these sleeves in. So, a little bit of fitting, but done during the process of making the blouse. And you can definitely do that. You don't always have to use what's called a muslin. You don't ever use muslin for a muslin. A muslin just means test garment. Most of my muslins always are wearable. So if you've measured your paper pattern like I talked about, then yours should fit pretty good out of the first test. Cut it out at two, wearing it at four. <laughs> it's got to have leggings. I'm wearing jeans and so my jeans are too baggy for it. So I've got to have some leggings. Now the arms, remember you measured your arms with your arm bent. So the sleeves seem long until you bend your arm. And then they're still a tad long, but the thing is they stretch. You could very, very, very easily just fold these up again. <laughs> fold them up again and sew it. So I might do that. See, and on the paper, remember this isn't paper. This is a slinky knit fabric. See, so I can just fold those up again which I think I will, because I think they came out a little long. So, I'll shorten the sleeves. Will I shorten the paper? No, because the paper's right. The paper isn't slinky. I'm not crazy about the collar. The collar's fine, but it's not as pretty as when you use the ITY knit. The ITY knit is silky and slinkier. Even though this has a lot of stretch, a lot of stretch, it's not the same as if you make it out of ITY. ITY is much drapier and softer and slinkier. The shoulders. See, it's, it's stretchy. And so the shoulders. The shoulders are right on the paper. But on me, they're falling off my shoulder a little bit. Now, can I fix that? I could if I took the sleeve out, cut the blouse back, put the sleeve back in. But... Does it bother me that much? I don't know. It might. It might bother me that much. That's what happens with stretchy knit fabric, my friends. You know, I don't think there's any shoulder police where I live. I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm just going to leave it. It's comfortable. It feels great. I'll shorten the sleeves. It doesn't have a hem in it yet, but it will. But to cut it out at two and wear it at four, not bad, huh? Now I may lay awake in bed tonight and think, I really need to take those sleeves out and fix those shoulders. <laughs> I probably will. <laughs> I do things like that. But um, right now, I need to go down and figure out what to do with a bunch of pork chops, boneless pork chops laying on my kitchen counter that I've got to make for supper. When I put it with the right color pants, I'll either wear it with green pants or burgundy pants. I think green would be best. Um, it needs to be leggings, though, or, or, you know, fitted. What do you call it? Straight leg jeans or pants or whatever. Oh, look at that. Now, remember, it's not hemmed up yet, so it's going to be a couple inches, at least an inch and a half shorter on my hem. Like right there. Like right about there. Ooh, isn't it pretty fabric? Yeah, I think I'm going to make myself fix the shoulders. Ah, what you do is you take a marker. You know where your shoulder is. When you put your arm up, you get a bend. There's my shoulder right there. I cannot believe it's that far off. I really can't. So I will come back an inch, and then I will just curve it down into the bottom. And so the sleeve will then be up here where it belongs. Oh, 
oh, how did these things happen? It's the fabric. It's the fabric. If I made this out of a woven, it would sit exactly, exactly right there on my shoulder point. My snippet tomorrow, <laughs> look at it. Look how far off it is. Look at my green marks up there. So I'll do a snippet in the morning after I fix it. So you can see all things are fixable, but not always. Good morning. Are you ready for the snippet on Saturday morning? I came up here about an hour ago to finish this top. When I got up here, the top was way down to here. Way like three inches under my crotch. Because I thought I was going to wear it with leggings. But then I pulled it up to see if I could wear it with my, what are these, straight leg jeans or whatever the heck they are. And... Of course, the thing about these tops is if they're long down here, it cuts your legs off. It makes your legs look like little bitty, tiny munchkin legs. <laughs> and so, it seems like every time I make a top, I come in here and I'll pull it up and I'll think, Oh, look how much longer it makes my legs look. <laughs> so I cut off four inches and then I hemmed it with my um, cover stitch machine. And then I came in here. And it's all done, yay! No, it's not. Because it was way out here. I look like a giant whale. You know, sometimes, even though you've got some muffins and puffins and mm, um, you don't want to cover them up with a big, huge puff of fabric on top. You look a lot better if it comes into you. Now, I needed that if I was going to wear it with leggings, but I'm not going to wear it with leggings, so I needed to take the fullness out of the top. What I should have done before I put the hem in was taken out the side seams, which would have been hard because they're surged, so I probably wouldn't have done that. But what you would do if you knew in advance is you would take it off the side seams of the front only because in the front is where you put the great big huge full bust adjustment. And so that throws the side seam way out. Now for a top you're wearing over leggings, yes, you want that. But if you want one that's fitted to you, then you would just cut off that side seam and bring it back into where it was to start with. It, it doesn't make sense to me. It's like, wouldn't you be removing the full bust adjustment? No, Peggy Sagers, learned this from Peggy Sagers. You put that extra in it, and does she even do full bust adjustments? No, because her patterns come with sizes. But she told me or showed me or talked about it or something. I think she showed me. She cut a little bitty pattern out and showed me. And she said, just cut off the sides and put them back where they were originally before you put the extra in the middle. And so, how you still have a, an FBA, I don't know. I don't know a lot of stuff, you guys. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do, even though this is a knit, I am going to put waist arts in it. And you can see how I have pinned it. And you can see it's a bunch. Goodness, it's two inches here and two inches here. But I'm going to take this in and I'm going to bring it up. Now, I've got it just pinned gently here in front of the mirror. But when I go into the other room, I'm going to mark center front. And I'm going to go over four inches this way and four inches this way and make sure these line up. Because that's what you want is between your apexes, eight inches, cut it in half, four inches, that's where you want your waist darts. Okay? But I like it very much. What do you think? The collar, since this is a knit with good recovery, this is actually from Gorgeous Fabric, so it's a nice fabric. It's a higher quality fabric. <laughs> but since it has such good recovery, the, uh, the Dondi collar doesn't drape as much. Can you tell that? But since it's a winter blouse and it's even got long sleeves, and notice, did you notice, since last night, my shoulders are right on. They're right on. How come is that? Because last night, I cut, oh my goodness, half inch? I think I cut a half inch off up here at the shoulder, and then I just took the uh, styling curve and curved it down into the underarm, 
And so I uh, moved my sleeves up to where they belong. So doesn't that look good? It looks so much better. Okay, I'm gonna go sew these in. I've already hemmed it. <laughs> So they're just going to be on the, they won't be on the outside. They're not going to be like this. They're going to be on the inside. <laughs> but I have to mark them, then fold them to the inside, and then I will probably trim them so I don't have all of this extra bulk inside my blouse. Since it doesn't ravel, knits don't ravel. Let me go do that, and I'll be back with the finalized new top. So all in all, shoulders are in the right place. I have darts in the front, so I don't have, well, if I took two inches out here and two inches out here, I've taken four inches out of the top. So, and it's still got plenty of room. I didn't make it tight. You know, you don't want it tight or it's going to form over every, every little tiny roll that you've got. So you don't want it tight, but you do want it to have some shape, okay? This is just Joy's world, okay? <laughs> You make it however you want to. You use whatever pattern you want to. Remember, I kind of made my own pattern because I used the fit knife system. And in the fit knife system, you draw your own pattern. And those patterns allow for lots of ease. So you determine how much ease you like. It, it, it makes a difference what garment you're making. Are you making a coat? Are you making a top to go over leggings? Are you making a t-shirt to go underneath a sweater? You know, it all makes a difference. And so, if I had known I was making this to start with, I would have totally taken out a whole bunch of the ease. But remember, I thought I was making a long top for leggings. <laughs> How about the back? Sway back, round back. I don't have to pull it forward. This is going to stay where it's at because I've got a round back in it, so it's not going to be pulling backwards. It doesn't have a bunch of fullness up here because I put the sway back in it. It has a straight side seam because I put a sway back in it. Ta-da! It has no wrinkles. No wrinkles. See how there's no wrinkles here? There's no bust dart. There's no bust dart here. But the waist darts are a bust dart. So, Ooh, I think it's going to be one of my faves. I've got to go. It's lunchtime, and I'm sure Sideburns is hungry. Hey, you want a Sunday snippet? <laughs> I just came up to download our Shine. Jerry and I talked forever this morning, so it's taking a long time to download from the camera. So I have a project. I picked a project, any project. I've been sleeping in this nightgown. It says, life, life's, life's a stitch. Life's a stitch. When I made this nightgown, I decided to try this fold over elastic. I tell you, I do not like it. I do not like it at all. I think I'm going to send my whole supply to Viv. She uses it and likes it. The thing is, this itches me. I have such sensitive skin. It's just unbelievable how sensitive my skin is. So this stuff scratches my skin. I don't like it. So I'm cutting it off. That's what I'm doing. I'm cutting it off. <laughs> Plus, it, it's too springy. And it like <sighs> gets too close to my neck. <laughs> and it looks like it's a plenty big neckline, I know. But I'm getting ready to fix it. I'm probably going to have to fix it with black. Maybe white. I, I doubt I have any of this fabric left. I would be surprised. It's luscious fabric, whatever it is very soft. I don't know where it's from. I don't usually get this kind of fabric from Fabric Mark Fabrics. So it was probably Joanne or, uh, you know, back in the day. Young people probably never even heard of Hancock's. <laughs> but Hancock's used to be my hangout. Oh goodness, yes. I used to go there and just sit and look at the pattern books. I hated going to Joanne because it was always dirty. There were, now back when I owned a business, the closest store to me was Joanne's. And I used to go to Joanne's and at lunchtime or if I left work early or if I needed a break or whatever. 
And I'd go there and just sit at the pattern table or just walk around the store, walk, 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 and look at everything. Well, I went there one time and it was hotter than a firecracker in that store. The air conditioners were broken. And I said something. I said, oh my gosh, it's so hot in here. Why don't you turn the air on? They said, the air conditioner's broken. I said, oh my goodness, is somebody coming out to fix it? She said, well, we're reporting it, trying to see if we can get it fixed. I went there like three or four days later and their air conditioner still wasn't fixed. And those employees were so hot. Ah, I'm telling you. I just did not care for that Joann's. Okay, here it is. I've cut it off. Look how springy it is. Springy. Springy. Oh, <laughs> it came backwards and hit me in the face. <laughs> You're supposed to go forward, you dingling stuff. There we go. <laughs> hit me in the mouth. I'm going downstairs with a bruise on my lip. You're going to say, what happened to you? All right, so there's my neckline. So what I'm going to do is a, um, a chenille, is that a chenille? A chenille trim. And I'll cut a strip and I'll fold it in half. I will make it one inch shorter than the length around this hole. And then I will sew it to this hole and it will have a little band sticking up. So that's my project for the morning. Actually, it's already noon. And I need to go down and uh, make sure my husband has something to eat for lunch. <laughs> I'll be back when I get it done and show you how it turns out. How about that? Do you have one of these? It's a wheelie dealy, see? It's a wheelie dealy. It's called a curve runner. If you want one, they're in my Amazon store if they're not out of them. So I'm going to measure this opening, the neck opening that I have left by cutting off that trim. And I'm going to measure it right here on the edge. This is Judy Kessinger's way. And it measures 12 inches. Exactly. I have it folded in half. Nope, now I didn't get 12 inches that way. You have to be sure it's rolling the whole way and it doesn't hang up. Alright, we're going to say 11 and 3 fourths. You have to have some paper and you have to have a pen. 11 and 3 fourths times 2. 11 and 3 fourths and 11 and 3 fourths is 22 and 6 fourths. Now we know we got to take a hole out of 6, so we're going to take 4 away and we'll have 2 fourths left. And 2 fourths is a half. Y'all understand that? So we've got 23 and a half inches. 23 and a half inches, we're going to minus one inch. So we are going to cut 22 and a half inches off of, look what I found. I always take my leftovers. I have a great big huge bin back there with a the lid on it, see-through. And whatever's left from my fabrics, if it's a big enough piece, I always save it. And I've got a really nice big piece here. Praise the Lord, I'm so excited. Look at that. So, I am going to, I want one half inch sticking up, so I've got to have one half inch on the front, one half on the back, plus I have to have seam allowance of a half inch. So, half and a half is one. I'm going to cut a two inch wide strip. I'll probably end up with a little extra, but that's what I'm going to cut, and I'm going to cut it 22 and a half inches. You want to watch me? I don't know why you would, but I'll let the camera run while I go get a ruler. Slap your ruler down. All right, so let's say we need 24 just to make it even and put this at 12 inches. Let me see here. There's no, uh, no fold there. We're going to have to fold this. You want to cut it on the fold or not, but I'm going to. Cut it on the fold. I'm going to slap this down and put it on 12 inches. 12 is right there. And this is two and a half inches. But we know I don't need two and a half. Make sure you got fabric on both sides here. This is my quilter select ruler. This is the one I just bought recently when I saw my friend Mary. Hi Mary. I miss you. 
miss Mary and I miss Philly and I miss Margaret. You know, my friends that I actually could see. So we know we really need 22 and a half and I cut it 24. So I'm going to open it up. I always cut a little more than I need just in case, you know, it's folded funny or and I'm going to cut two and a half now. And I'm going to cut it. I think I really only need two. A half and a half. And a half and a half. I think I really only need two inches. So I'm going to do two inches. Okay. So now I have it cut. Now I need it to be 22 and a half long. So I'm going to go to 22 and a half which is right there. I love this ruler. 50 bucks I think it was, but oh my goodness. I'd have probably paid 75 or 100 for it if I had to. Okay, so there I am. 22 and a half by 2. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to sew it together into a circle. It's going to be a circle. Then I'm going to fold it in half after it's a circle. I'm going to fold it in half. Then I'm going to sew it all around the neck. Then I'm going to fold it up. And it will be this little, this little, this little thing sticking up at the neckline. And it won't itch me like that black stuff does. Ah, and this is when you divide this into fours. Might as well do it now since I've got it laying here. You're going to divide your neck opening into fourths. Get something to mark it with. Hopefully you have something friction marker. So there's center front. Here's the center back. Center back actually has a seam in it. Then you're going to match center front to center back. Center front to center back. And then you're going to mark it half the other way in half the other way. So here's one half here. And why do you have to do this? Because your halfway point is not going to be your shoulder seam. There's the shoulder seam and here I am practically an inch away from the shoulder seam. From my half, from my uh, quarter point is what it is. Don't you understand? You do half and half and half and half and then when you open it up you got four places and it's quarters. So I've got my quarters marked right here. Got my quarters marked here. I'm going to sew this in a circle. I'm going to mark the quarters on it. I'm going to line the seam up with the center back. The center back has a seam already. Put this on the neckline and then I'll come back and I'll show you. So here's an update. There's my little two inch band folded in half, sewn into a circle, sewn onto Right sides together, there's the front of the shirt. And there's what it looks like when it's folded back inside the shirt. This is what it looks like now, which is not good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this to a quarter inch. Then I'm going to press it to the inside. And then I'm going to sew right down here where that quarter inch seam allowance will be on the inside. Only a quarter inch wide, not a half inch wide. So here we are with our new neck. I wish that I had sewn this seam here down further. I'm always afraid I'm going to miss the inside and not catch it. <laughs> I sewed it so, so close to the seam that I ended up having to chop off a bunch more fabric in there. See, I just keep trimming it and trimming it. Actually, what would have worked better is if I had done a zigzag, a zigzag all the way down there, then it would have gone deeper. And even if it missed some places, it still would have held it all down much better. So how is this for a loyal uh, YouTube lady? I tried it on for you. Remember our lounge gown challenge? Remember? Were you there? Did you know me then? It wasn't that long ago. Was it last year? I think it was last year, maybe the year before. My friend, my now friend, Avandra, named these lounge gowns. 
And so a whole bunch of people made lounge gowns. It was lots of fun. So now you can see I have changed the neckline of this one. Oh, comfortable. I can't feel it. It's like it's not even there. Oh my goodness. So this is, I think I made like six or eight lounge gowns for that contest. Was it a contest? Did people win prizes? <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> I don't think Viv was in that one. I think it was just me wanting to make nightgowns. So um, anyway, check out the new, 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 new. And you saw how I did it right here in my Sunday snippet. I usually don't have my uh, lounge gown on at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, but <laughs> I do today, and I'm not taking it off. I was editing my snippets here. I think they're not very many snippets yesterday and today. But I have to tell you real quick, a uh, quick story. And then I've got to stop it because I'm already up to an hour on these snippets, and I don't like to go that long. But I have to tell you, Jerry almost had to tell people that his wife died and, and they would have to ask him, oh my goodness, well, how did your wife die? And he would have had to say, she got killed by applesauce. <laughs> no, I know I told him that. I said, aren't you glad, aren't you glad I got rescued? <laughs> yes, you know, for Christmas, Jerry bought me that pressure cooker instant pot thing. I don't know why they call it an instant pot. There's nothing instant about it. But I followed this recipe from the Pioneer Woman. She put a little cookbook in the pot. I decided to make applesauce. I followed her directions. I peeled apples forever. Six pounds of apples. I cut them Peeled them, cored them, cut them, peeled them, cored them, cut them. Oh my goodness, forever. The pot was all the way full to its two-thirds line. The directions say, cook for five minutes. Five minutes. Then, release the quick release lever. That's what it says. Cook for five minutes, push the quick release lever. So, you know, I'm not very familiar with it. I've used it once for pork chops and once for a roast. And so this was applesauce, five minutes, right? Well, for one thing, there's no five minutes in an Instant Pot. Forget that. I wish they would let me put the instructions in these things because they are clear as mud. Totally incomplete. I have searched and searched and there's nothing about this. Number one. I thought the timer was broken on my Instant Pot because every time I put the time in, the time just disappeared and it said on. And I thought, well on, uh, where's the timer? Where's the clock? Why doesn't it say how long? And so I thought the timer was broken. I told Jerry we were going to take it back to Walmart. So then I read, I kept reading and reading and reading, and I read something that said it takes 10 to 15 minutes for the Instant Pot to reach pressure. So, I thought, okay, let's just stand here and watch it for 15 minutes. So I just, you know, instant. <laughs> I just stood there, all the apples were in there, the apple juice was in there, the sugar was in there, the lemon was in there, the lid was on, screwed, and all that stuff. So I just waited 15 minutes. And finally, the on went off. And five minutes came up. Now, do you call that five minutes? I call that 20 minutes. Do you call it five? I don't. And then not only that, I'm telling you, it was scary. It was scary. Now, I'm already halfway afraid of the thing. And she said, cook for five minutes, then push the release. And so I got these really long tongs. They're longer than these scissors. They're like this long. And they got red tips on the end of them. So I stood across from it, and I pushed that lever. Thank God, thank God, I pushed that lever and oh my goodness, it was like Yellowstone Park, that geyser at Yellowstone Park. Oh my goodness, applesauce everywhere. 
all over the floor, all over my rug, all over the trash compactor, all over the counter. <laughs> Everywhere. Finally, I thought, maybe if I push that thingy, push it back off again, maybe it will stop. And so I got my big long thing with the red tips and I pushed it back off again. And thank God it stopped. But boy, you want to talk about a mess. And not only had I grabbed that great big long thing of tongs, I had uh, gloves with the mitts, you know, the cooking mitts on each arm, or I would have been burned on both my arms. Oh. So, evidently, <laughs> evidently, even though it says cook five minutes and push that knob, evidently you still have to wait 10 or 15 minutes after the product is cooked. So it's 15 to start five to cook, and another 10 to 15 to semi let the steam out, then push the lever. You all tell me. You all tell me. How, how the heck do you know? I mean, it got all done, and what it said on the little computer screen, it said L-0-0-0-0. L-0-0-0. Well, what does L mean? What does L mean? Look out? <laughs> Last chance? <laughs> oh, I'm going to let you go. I need to get this uploaded and snart, snart. I need to snart some new snippets. <laughs> I'll see you soon.